Hello, and welcome to part two of the Trespasser Treza tutorial. This time we're going to be importing further objects into the level so we can start building it. I'm going to open Trezed first. And for this example, I've decided to use the demo level as a source of foliage and rocks. Yay, yay, exciting. This can be one of the more tedious parts of Trespasser editing, but it pays off. Demo, data, demo. Let me see. I just want to go over. The, I use low detail so my computer doesn't sort of overheat. I go into higher detail if I need it. I don't generally use higher resolution textures. I don't know what the OpenGL stuff's about. Bump maps are sort of uh, candy you don't need. And load non visible objects. Very important. So, demo, hello. Let's say control 6, going to fly. Now, if you're in a level and you have no idea where the base objects are, you can go. I happen to know a bit over in that direction, but you can go to any of the in game objects, mainly trees, if you're looking for stuff or whatever. Any. Go to the. So, here we have uh, V Redwood 02. Dash zero 06, go to the, the one where it says zero 00, which is the parent instance. Then there's a button down here, jump to object. And here we have the tree's base instance along with several others. Press the key P and you'll get all these little dots representing objects, which is very useful since Treza doesn't generally render all the objects, you know, that you would see if all the objects are rendered and it's very handy so you can sort of not get lost in the level. Red dots indicate visible instances, green dots indicate invisible instances which we'll get to later. Actually this is a fine time to describe some of how this works. These trees, trees generally have what are called submodels uh, shown by the dollar sign key. These trees actually have quite a few submodels. If we take it apart, we see that uh, some of them are detail objects with funny little names. And these are for rendering the object at a distance in sprite form, I think it's called. There's, uh, there we select the parent instance. Where is, I want to show, there we go. Uh, still doesn't work. Uh, that, that is one thing. The, uh, my past two laptops have had a really difficult time selecting stuff. Other stuff keeps getting selected. You might have this problem too. It's something you have to live with. But yes, here's the infamous dummy material. That's what that says. Gray and orange stuff. And uh, in its script, it's not too complicated. See instance tangible true and has a sound uh, not terribly important to know but it, as a trespasser modder it would be a good idea to familiarize yourself with how all these objects work oh here's the detail object unlit equals true that's part of how it works so now we're going to focus on exporting these when uh, objects have submodels for their physics you want to export them one at a time. So let's see. I keep everything very organized. And I have a, where is it? Oh yeah, we're already in there. Mesh is full. And uh, let's see, environment. We're going to make a new folder just for tut left one. So there's that. Now here's a little demonstration of a problem 
with Trezed. You could call it a problem or a feature, it, but uh, when you have the various objects uh, of a parent instance like this selected at once, the the sub submodels uh, that are also selected will move at twice the vector of the parent one. You do not want this to happen. I and uh, so if you ever happen to have all these things selected and you want to move it, just select the main one and it'll work fine. I'm only going to import some trees since this is just a tutorial. So there are the trees. Fun, juicy little thing when you're exporting models. It's always a relief when you're like, oh, there's no green dots. Oof. So you just select them and export. Let's see, are there any more? Uh, yeah, even these little tiny ferns have green dots. They're going to have to be exported one at a time. Uh, let's see, we just got two grass objects. We don't, yeah, we can just use a bunch of grass. So we'll take the grass, some rocks. Where are some good rocks? There's some stumps. Here, I'm going to grab a fallen tree. Horizontal pine. I will eventually get to talking about overload errors with Geomad when there are too many models in one folder, but not quite yet. Let's see, rocks, 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 whatever, we're going to use these ones. So trees, grass, rocks, and uh, that should be it. Let me see. Do we want anything else from this level? What are? Oh yes, the guns. The guns. Which guns do we want? Uh, I love the Uzi. It uh, it doesn't have much ammo, or it fires too fast or something. But I love the Uzi. Let me see. So there's the environment thing. Props, weapons, and touch level one. Muzzle flash. How? Let me think. We're going to do all the muzzle flashes at once. Just to eliminate issues. I'm not a fan of this one. Hunting rifle is nice. I'm gonna skip it though. Spaz. And a pistol. So let's see, if you turn on C, triggers, you'll see a whole bunch of these orange things. They are the muzzle flashes that go in front of the guns when they're fired. This gray one here is supposed to be for the tranquilizer ones, but it was never scripted to them. We'll skip it. Now instead of trying to figure out which one of these are and aren't used by the guns I'm importing, I'm just going to import all of them. It's not a big issue. Um, for practical reasons, I'm going to use a D 
different folder for the muzzle flashes. So we don't get lost in textures and stuff when we're trying to do things. So that's the guns. What else do we want? There's those Boca cubes. What is this? A helmet without a skeleton. Now, there's the skeleton. Why don't we just import the skull? A little object. So, back in props. Which, by the way, is what the letter P stands for in the object names and let's see what else is over here just grabbing some handy stuff to demonstrate barrels barrels are always nice crates are always nice do you need a power pylon and we'll just grab these things Let me see, is there anything in game? Sometimes objects are not found in the basement of the level they're in. Sometimes the zero zero instance is in game like these helicopter pads. Uh, I, I don't think we need any of this. Oh, and uh, next I'm going to show off fancy little, well, let me see, for, for the sake of showing everyone, and as a general good resource, I, a long time ago, created a level called DinoLev. Now, in the little entry play area here, what you have are clone instances of dinosaurs. Uh, not clones, excuse me. Copied meshes, if you will. The point being that they are separate from the actual dinosaurs over here in the basement. And uh, it's a handy little thing because if you want different versions of the same dinosaur in one level, such as raptors with different AI behavior, or dinosaurs of the same species but anchored to different stay near targets you uh you will want different meshes and you can use these and rename them to do that without going through some slightly unnecessary processes let me see what do we want here i'm quite fond of raptor b let's do this Raptor B one thousand zero zero. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Now, uh, if you just go to File Export with this mesh, with this model selected, it will actually go and export the Raptor over there instead. So what you need to do is you need to have multiple objects selected, instances. Here I have what's called anchored dinos, and uh, I used it as the sort of default anchor for any. These were all borrowed from the retail version of the game. These in-game in copies, and uh, uh, so I used this anchor to rescript all of them, or wh whichever ones of them needed it. And so what we can do, if you select multiple objects at once. Tres Ed will not go to the basement dinosaur, so you can put it wherever you want. Let's see. I don't ah. da, 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 Meshes. Animals. I'm going to make a new folder here called uh, in-game. Just because. 
in-game dinos. I'm actually, let's see, da, da, da. there we go. And save. So there's a raptor, also like a trike. That's one thing too, if you have selection issues on your computer, yeah, like see, I just, oh, there we go, sometimes, but if you have selection issues on your computer, you can use the drag and select, it's a pretty common thing, just saying, and try Ceratops 10100. And ooh, do we want the Albertosaurus? Why not? He's actually he may well be my favorite trespasser dinosaur. He's just awesome. Do, 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 do. Save. So now we have those. Uh, I could proceed to export these ones. Very simple. You select and then file export TVM. Oh, by the way, do not use 3DS. Just it was included uh, in Trezid, uh, possibly because they did not have the ability yet to import. TPMs into 3D Studio Max. Uh, 3DS's usefulness with Trespasser editing is limited. There are some things it's useful for, but it's a last option because 3DS format sort of fucks everything up. Do not use it. Close. Let me see. So we've got ah we've got dinosaurs we've got foliage we've got rocks we've got misc objects oh i just remembered something i am going to show you how to import terrain objects into a level with uh where they did okay so hang on data Demo. Now, as you may remember, in the first part of this tutorial, we had uh, we got our terrain, uh, a sort of basic selection of terrain objects from the import folder that I put into Shell Generator. I'm going to show you how, what happens if you import terrain objects into a level without doing anything. Terrain. Tut lev one. People like people forget to do this all the time. So Geomad I swear my computer's slowing down, I don't know why. Geomad open there we go. I'm pretty sure we just opened it twice. <laughs> See what? what the hell? There we go. What the hell? Oh, is that? I have no idea. Anyway, import file. Tut 
cut load one. Dun dun dun. Terrain. Cut load one. Big pine and valley objects. Going to uncheck all both of those. Paper appears to have worked. Only that stupid error. Going into Trezed. Whenever I uh, start modding, by the way, whenever I open a new level in Trezed, I hit Control F2. What Control F2 does is, uh, it's where, where's the thing here? Ah, yes. Control F2, toggle bookmark. In other words, make bookmark. And then F2, you hit F2 to go to your bookmark. It's extremely handy so you don't get lost and need to fly forever across your level. So, uh, where? Okay, so we. Okay, turning P on. So we just imported you know, those Pine Valley terrain objects. Where are they? And it so happens that they're over here. They might have been a lot further away. So, select. These are the parent or base instances. I'm going to move them over here with the other ones, clone them with control C, that's what made that, then move them over here. Yeah, this by the way, this little landscape button toggles whether or not terrain objects are rendered. The Trezed will render either the terrain or the terrain objects, you'll never have both at once. So here are the objects. You can move them around even when the terrain is what's drawn. I'm going to save and have a look in game. Okay, so Control Shift W. Cut left, bottom, almost. I've been working on stuff. And so it's like, yay, our terrain average is here, but what the fuck is up with their color? I, like, don't. He's like, ah, what do I do? What do I do? Well, there's a little thing called palettes. And. So now we're going I'm going to show you how to fix that. So let's see. Let's find the folder that the uh Pine Valley terrain objects were exported into. Cut lev one. I'm going to switch the view so we can see what we're doing. And notice that it looked fine in Trezet, but not in game. And I'm going to explain why. In uh in Trespasser, all uh, almost all textures use what are called 256 uh, color palettes or 8-bit palettes and uh, these are used to save space and uh, there are only so you can fit as I recall 128 palettes in one level 
Uh, most people won't get around there, but if you go around importing tons of objects from all over the retail game and fan levels, especially fan levels, you might breach the pallet level and then you'll start, as far as I understand, it loops back to pallet 1 and certain pallets just won't be rendered again. But that is a offshoot problem. We're going to focus here on the terrain. So uh, there is a particular feature of Trespasser. That 256 color palette, all the terrain textures have to use the same one. And uh, all the, each of the retail levels of the game uses a different palette for its terrain. Uh, and uh, the different palettes come with different colors. Certain terrain palettes are better or worse at representing specific colors. As a side note, I have found that the uh, InGen Town IT terrain palette is the most versatile. However, be warned, it does not do blue well. And in fact, the sort of blue sand terrain objects you'll find in the retail beach and jungle road uh, sort of get very unhappy with any other palette. And let's see here. So what we need is the palette used by our level currently. That is to say, we need to find the first terrain object. That's how the level, that's how the engine knows which terrain palette to use if there's more than one. It checks anyway, but uh, visibility. Where was it? Select first terrain object. It's under terrain. Going to use the white box here, which is zoom into selection. And uh, it's this one. File, export TPM. Now, as it happens, we could have chosen any of these, but I wanted to show you how to be sure you get the right one. I'm going to export that there. And close. And where where to go? Da, 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 da. There we go. And it's the last one. There's this opacity map. There's this color map. Going to open Wally Palette Editor, which uh, is featured in Trespasser Twilight. Drag the texture in. Waiting, waiting. I think part of it's actually that the recording process is using up some system resources, but uh, still waiting. See, do I have any campfire stories or something? <laughs> well, let's see. So, uh, as a side note, oh, there we go. <laughs> of course. So, in Wally, we can see here the 256 colors. I never ever edit this manually. Uh, I'm sure some people do. I'm not going to get into such a thing at this time. 
but uh, so what we need to do go to colors save palette and uh, you may find in Wally palette editor in Tres Twilight I have included a plethora of uh, trespasser palettes most of which are from the retail game but some of which are from fan levels and uh, there's a ton of different terrain palettes it would be handy if I could sort of remember which terrain palette was used by this one or do some sort of analysis until I find it since it's already one of these ones I know but uh, I'm not gonna do that I'm going to make a new one terrain Hut lev one. So close. Now what we need to do select the textures, not the opacity maps, just the color ones. Then drag them in. And now, I, it's possible to speed this up, so type whatever your thing was, terrain, tut, lev, one, select it, copy, open, close, save, load palette, copy, open, close, save, and repeat. like how these, uh, some of the Pine Valley terrain objects, you can tell, are blurred from some sort of compression. I'm not sure why. Like, uh, notice... You can also notice minor color changes when you switch palettes, by the way. But, uh, so notice how blurry that is, and notice how crisp that is. All these little tiny pixels and such. I'm not sure exactly what they did. It's fortunate that uh, even though they're not used, most retail terrain palettes uh, incorporate the colors necessary to represent these particular Pine Valley objects. It's, it's handy, although I generally don't feel they look quite right in anything but Pine Terrain, despite what we're doing. It's an example. Geomad, hello. Our friend with the geothermal plant icon. <sighs> Once upon a time, there was a double click. <laughs> and it opened Geomad! Yay! Gee, there, there's a... Uh, it's working. Da, 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 da. Aha. Uh -huh. Import file, just file. Oh, uh, oops. Tutlev. Then terrain, tut of again, and and PV tableau thingy. Oh, as so notice the little error here. Added zero new textures, zero, replace zero textures, skip zero existing textures. Uh, where else does it say? Uh, 
added zero new meshes, replaced zero meshes, skipped seven meshes. So uh, that happened because we did not have the right options selected. Hot level one, PV tableau, replace meshes. We don't need to replace the instances. As a matter of fact, if we clicked this, it would move them back to the, their original location. But if we just use meshes, we'll get to keep the location we moved them to. Replace, okay, some textures exist. Replace them, yes. So, yes. And now the test. Down at the bottom, top of one. And voila, huh. they look good. Yay! Getting back to the level, we are going to do some imports. Geomad. Import directory. Uh, let me see. I need to cover this. I don't think we're ever going to have too many different things in one folder, but uh, if this thing will load, tutlev1. So, what are we doing here? Let's see. Environment. Level one. We used import directories, so all these will be selected. Now, there are a few complexities about importing direct from directory, getting a bunch imported at once, and not having Geomad crash on you, also corrupting your level in the process. Uh, I picked up a few little ideas. The primary philosophy primary thing to follow is that uh when uh like when you get to about the bottom of the window in terms of stacked tpm exports stop and make a new folder call it more or whatever and start importing into that one and continue uh, geomad does not like tons of complicated models all being processed at once. It seems especially hazardous with magnets. I don't know why. And uh, TPMs with multiple things in them. But uh, there's that. It's very important. So import from directory. Select any one of these. We don't need either of these checked at the moment. Need to replace any textures. The import appears to have worked. Now, if you're starting out and you go through that, you might want to check your level intermittently to make sure things are going right. As an experienced modder, I sort of know things are working. Import directory. I can't actually remember if we have. Okay, so, ah, tut level one. What are we doing? Uh, we got the environment, whoa. Did we get the, ra yes we did. Okay, props. So first we'll do the regular tut level one folder, which has a whopping two TPMs in it.
then we're going to use then we're going to fetch the guns we exported. Weapons to lab one. So there are the three guns. Now we need muzzle flashes. So there's muzzle flashes are a little tricky because they have 24 bit textures. Unlike 8 bit textures, 24 bit textures contain all kinds of colors and are not palleted. What I have done. You can find, uh, let me see, what's the address? Well, go, go to trezcom.org, find my signature, Dr Draconosaurus, my, shown on my profile. There's a link to the Trez file box where you can download the Trespasser Texture Archive or just go through the textures one by one. In the Trez Texture Archive, there is a folder called effects. There's all kinds of neat stuff here, but in effects, you will find the muscle flash textures with one crucial modification. Uh, the problem is Geomad shifts textures uh, left to right, I can't remember, by eight pixels, or is it four pixels? Is that eight or four pixels upon import? So it'll look fine when uh, just you know as the texture is sitting there uh, in your folder ready to be imported. But after import, you may or may not notice that the texture has been shifted. And when these things have opacity maps, it gets even worse because the opacity doesn't match the color map. So in this effects folder. These are the hit spangs. We do not need those. Starting with this, just select all the muzzle flash textures. We don't need the trank one either. Select them all. You'll notice that they are shifted. What I did was I did a reverse shift so that when they are imported, the shift puts them into the correct position. Oh, why did I do cut, paste, blah, 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 cancel copy meshes props weapons top lab one muzzle flashes we're going to paste and replace everything that's there next Open Geomat again. Sorry, this is turning into such a long tutorial, but I wanted to be sure and get the whole import process down in one video. Import file. I don't know, maybe next time we'll put music on or something. Probably not. Top level one. Muzzle flashes. And MF5 Pro. Now, when you import 24-bit textures, you're going to get this. The level may not behave as expected. Please review the messages below. You go to review the messages if you happen to, and it'll say, Note, 24-bit RBG textures are experimental and may not work. It's uh, it's a note. It's, you can, yeah, note warning error. Notes, you know, you can just ignore this completely. Of course, if you, uh, it might remind you if you haven't done 
anything to fix a 24-bit texture. I'm not going to show you the Photoshop procedure, but uh, basically you have to ship the textures. Uh, my recommendation is if you're not an experienced modder, you want a new 24-bit texture in your level, ask trezcom.org to help you or use Photoshop. Basic, uh, if you are Photoshop adept, go to the effects folder I showed you. Find the find one of the muzzle flash images. Look at how many pixels is shifted in which direction, and just copy back. Now we're going to save. And that was our stuff. Let's open the level. Oh, one thing. When importing, just freaking test your level before you go doing stuff, or you'll be you might end up very pissed. Da 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 da. da. Very brief. Telev one. Does it crash or not? Just because Geomads says your level is fine doesn't mean that it is. As it happens, it is. And look, you can even see the trees off in the corner. Yay! Okay. Back to level editing. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, we're almost done here with this tutorial. Open. Tutlev 1. Uh, let's see. Set a bookmark. I just wanted to say something. When I uh, demonstrated the axial rotations last time, I only mentioned the number 4. 4 is the x axis, 5 is the y axis, 6 is the z axis. Very important. My mistake. My bad. Moving on, we have, let's see, turn on P, we got all these objects, you know, we're just going to leave these here. This is, uh, it's, it's, uh, so l little things about the basement, don't put it too far away, and be sure to not put it, you know, it's my recommendation to not actually put it on the terrain, put it away from the terrain, uh, put it close to the gaming area, not too close, you don't want to be looking at it from in the playing area. But this looks fine to me. They're just sitting there. And some other objects. Ooh, you know what? Okay, so we might want some organization. What I'm going to do, like these guns are way over here. Let's move these guns. So, guns, hello. Muzzle flashes, hello. Okay, we just, uh, hang on. So, little... little Thing here, yeah. See, I accidentally selected the uh, the pistol's shoulder magnet when trying to get the muzzle flashes. You gotta watch out for stuff like that. Turn C off, just the guns. Okay, we'll turn N off, then C on, then just the muzzle flashes and going to move them closer to everything else I like organized basements let's see one thing I didn't like about these is that they're some of them were buried in the terrain da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. oh that's one thing so right click drag is drag objects around Going to leave all this foliage where it is, and the rocks, and the skull. I have to turn C off. The skull. Da da da. Going to put the skull with the other stuff. Organization is handy. Tight area to work in is handy. And we're set. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have successfully imported various different objects 
I okay. You know what? We're going to import one more thing. There's a very important. We, we, we'll we'll cover the two importing stuff in this tutorial. So I'm going to go fetch what's called the Unimog from the beach level. I'm going to use beach reloaded more specifically. I happen to know the Unimogs in here. Where it's over here, resting on a ledge thingy. So, uh, I'm quite sure this is not the parent instance. I'm going to check. And Whoa, it is the parent instance. That's fun. Okay. Well, all kinds of ways we could do this. I'm going to move the uh, these ne next two objects away so they don't pollute our export. No guns or anything. Now we turn on I here. It shows invisible instances. So here's what I'm going to do here. You can try to do the invisible instances separately, but you do not need to. First, what you uh, so there are these guys. These are submodels and not invisible instances, and they need to be exported with the parent model. Du -du 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 -du. I really wish that was more organized. Usually the cars like that are organized in the basement, but apparently not this time. Props. Tutlev 1. Mercedes Unimod body. Door. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, now, now this is something, I'm just going to move that. I don't care. I'm not using it again. I'm not going to save this level. Select. Oh, we picked up a trespasser. <laughs> There's a rock under here. Unselect. Come on. What? Stupid. Yeah, all kinds of weird selection things happen. Any? How do I? I'm quit. Turn that off, turn that off, rock, please leave. Selected, we know there's just one object selected. Invisible instances on. Select. And uh, now, if you're like me and you're like super obsessed with everything, you can. Uh, Deselect the main truck and reselect it so that the TPM bears the name of the primary model. It's not always necessary, but you might get a little lost in your importing sometimes, and it helps with that. So if you make it a habit, you never have to worry about it. Then close. Do not save. Okay, and import file. Since the since we imported since we exported that into something that already had stuff in it, we're going to do both of these one at a time. I'm sure you could do import directory if it was just those two, and you'd be fine. Uh, and I I'm just gonna leave that at that. Uh, Tutlev one. Mercedes Unimog door. And we 
Mercedes Unimog body. I'm also going to go and fix this stupid little error so it stops bothering us. Bookmark. Da, 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 da. Control F, find Unimo. Ta -da, it's here. Turn on instances. Do not turn on submodels. Select them. Shift, oh, what is it yet? F2. Just F2 to get back to the bookmark. And let's see. Going to go over here where these other objects are. Again, I like organized basements. Let me see what I can come up with here. Select the body because the body's not rotated. Well, the body's good at the basis of the rotation. Then go to zero. Oh, let me show you what this is. This XYZ box here, click it. You can edit objects' names. You can position them manually, you can change the rotations, and you can change their scale. We're going to, uh, it's nice, it's, this is useful when you need precision. So zero, 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 there's that. Now, uh, I'm gonna do a little thing. Oh, I used control, I used drop to terrain earlier without talking about it. Uh, now, there is a command, control D, drop to terrain. It's like if you weren't paying close attention, you might think everything's fine. But uh, this is doors dislodged now. And as you can see, all the physics have dropped to the terrain as well. It's just a sort of reality of trespasser modeling that you can't drop to terrain if you've got all these different objects selected at once. That's annoying when some objects need to come with other objects. But that's how it works. So to get this on the terrain, I have to manually move it. And I'm not going to get too picky with that. And control C for copy. Oh wait, we're, so anyway, that was how to export and import an object with invisible instance physics. I wanted to go over that. And of course there's one without and all the trees trees and we will cover populating the map with these things in the next tutorial so that's it for trespasser trezed tutorial video 2 video tutorial, tutorial video 2 I hope you enjoyed it Importing stuff into your level is often one of the most problematic parts of trespasser editing. If you have any questions, and uh, or you want to, you know, anything about importing you think wasn't covered enough, let me know. And uh, next week we'll cover doing stuff in game, or I mean in Trezed, making your world, putting stuff around, editing terrain. Should be fun. And after that, we'll get into what comes later. Take care.